Hey, uh, for my prompt today, I'd like to try something a little bit different. And um, so I'm going to record and you'll see all of the uh, text will also be printed. So you have your options because options are always good. In my Monday evening group, I offered this picture that you'll see. When I choose prompts, I'm looking for evocative images and poems that have an emotional valence and ideas with both universal and personal possibilities. I'm not thinking about my own work or memories, but for ideas that have a broad potential. At the moment, I offer suggestions for how the writers might approach any given prompt. It's fresh for me, as if seen for the first time. Invariably, I'm surprised by what I'm inspired to write, which in itself is a surprise. Anyway, Let's see if you're inspired by this picture. Perhaps it evokes a memory or a scene for a story. What I'll often suggest, especially to those new to the process, is to begin by describing what you see and writing until the writing takes you into story, poem, or essay. Have at it, and I hope to read some of your pieces. There's space in the comments or in the new chat feature. This is what I came up with. The underground walkways in Rome smelled of piss and rodents, a hundred years of urine. It was safer in some senses, given the number of traffic lanes and the speed at which Italians drive. One friend joked that the only way to safely cross a Roman street was to find a nun or a priest to walk with. I used those walkways during the months I spent there in the 70s, but in recent visits, I don't recall even seeing them. This is what I noticed. Nothing is as I remember, nothing. Not the streets I walked in 1976 where I examined every shop, every gallery, every museum. In those days, one could just walk in just like that. The shops had displays, but nothing you could touch without asking specifically for that item in that size, in that color. In 1978, when I returned, the streets were new. Rome isn't that big and I imagine it's been the way it is for many decades. What I'm trying to say is that it's me. When I returned in 2014, I strode through the streets. Sure, I would remember the Bernini where David and I stayed for one night only. When at last I found it, I burst of tears. I was sobbing for Christ's sake. It didn't look at all how I remembered it, nothing. And the cafe on the hill where that winter afternoon, a woman in furs with a tiny cup of espresso gave David such a look, a look that registered somewhere in his groin. All he needed was for me to say, go ahead. I didn't. I couldn't find the cafe, although I was certain it was on that long curving hill. No longer were there shingles indicating pensiones, those lovely inexpensive hotels that sometimes included a private bathroom. In 1976, I'd paid five to $10 a night. In 1978, it was 15 to 25. And in 2014, it was Airbnbs in Trastevere for $100 a night. I'm aware that I'm rambling and I seem to have lost the idea of tunnels, except that memory too is a tunnel. I don't know what I want to say aside from acknowledging my faulty memory, how memory molds, stretches and rearranges experience. My sister and I lived in the same houses with the same siblings and parents, but every memory I share, she corrects. Not like that, not that color, size, time, place. She's older, so I defer to her. She must know. Cities do change, of course, they do. But what I'm trying to say is I'd be less confused if I let memories slide. You know, live in the present. Let each moment be new, a wonder to behold, as it is. For listening.